lesson four today. Ooh, on the greatest miracle of our time, 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 time. The breaking back of Zion. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. All right, I'm going to get excited eventually. It's all right. I'm going to just clarify what we've been doing for an intro to this series. But it says, you are currently living in the generation prophesied by the prophets thousands of years ago. You know, how many people can you walk into today and say, hey, what's this generation? You know, the world tells this is generation X, this is generation Y, this is generation this, that. But the scripture declares that this is the generation prophesied by the prophets thousands of years ago, known as the gathering back of Jehovah's covenant people, who by his command have been sown into every nation of the earth. And every kindred and every tribe and every tongue. All throughout the earth, there is a call right now going out to anyone who has an ear to hear saying, Come out of her. Come out of Babylon. Yes. My people. And return back to Jehovah's everlasting covenant. This is the bringing back of Zion, the greatest miracle of our time. But as usual, the crowd is oblivious to what God is doing in the earth. Just like when Yeshua at eight days old was brought into the temple to be dedicated, there were two in Israel that knew who he was. Just like the generation that Yeshua wept for in Jerusalem. And he cried, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who stoned the prophets. And kill those who have been sent to you. You did not recognize the day of your visitation. The crowd never gets what God is doing in the earth. But there is always a remnant. There's always even just one, Abraham, Noah, Moses. There's always that remnant that God is speaking to. This is what I'm doing in your generation. This is what I'm doing. Mark has a saying, he quotes from someone else in our house all the time, the popular Jesus is never the correct Jesus. What a privilege to be awakened to and participating in the consummation of the ages. Amen. It's the point of studying this entire series of going back in history and finding the pieces that God has sovereignly put together and is breaking out in light, in knowledge, as Daniel prophesied, in this generation that we can put together what our God has gloriously called the purposes to which we've been called to before time began, that we could stand back and boast in our works, that we cause ourselves to be born in Lebanon, Tennessee, or in Gallatin, Tennessee, Hendersonville, or wherever we live, born in this time and season, and put ourselves here in this place in this time. We're so smart we figured all this out. No. He is doing a mighty work in our midst, and it is to His glory, and to His glory alone, of why we research this, and we look, and we study, and we will eventually come to the place where we will marvel. Hmm. And we will be astounded and astounded hmm. at what God is doing in the earth today. Genesis chapter 17, verse 6. Two promises made to our father Abraham, if you believe your scripture. And I shall make you exceedingly fruitful. And I make you nations. I will make nations of you and sovereigns will come from you. Here we find the two root promises given to Abraham, a multitude of nations. Most see Abraham as the father of the Jews or the father of geopolitical Israel. But scripture is clear that nations would come from him. And through this nations, there's a head of these nations called Ephraim that we begin to look at last week that is carrying the birthright of this promise of Abraham in the nations. And it is very obvious if you look among the nations today who 
to do, and I'll tell you what to do, and I'll tell you what to do. We may go historically and archaeologically and through records and look at a little bit of where the tribes migrated and where they ended up, but that is not the focus of this series. The focus of this series is to identify yourself in the scripture from Genesis to Revelation that you can find yourself so that in the days now and ahead, you can walk in covenant with God. You can do your part of the covenant. You can walk as a keeper of the Torah like Yeshua, who was a keep feast, a feast keeping, Sabbath observing, Torah fulfilling son of the Most High God. And if we are going to emulate him and be conformed to his image, then we're going to do that. But there's a birthright that goes with it, being a son of Abraham. And we need to know how that's playing out in the nation today. If you want to understand Bible prophecy, you need this key. And it also is broken down into the multitude of nations or the sown seed in the nations, not just the lost tribes. God never lost a tribe. He's not lost anything. He knows where everyone is. And we're all mixed right now. I got a little Cherokee, a little witch, a little Irish, a little, little bit of this and a little bit of that. And that if I start genealogy.com and try to get my ancestry, I was looking at some guy the other day doing some history. And he got on there and was showing his, his ancestry on ancestry.com that went back to the Merovingian kings. And I'm like, uh oh. You see, if you know a little bit about the past, you know a little bit about the present. The Merovingian kings are part of the 13 satanic bloodlines in the earth. So guess what? I'm not going to listen to that guy anymore. <laughs> but my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Come on. But we're not going to perish. Hallelujah. So we need to understand this birthright. It's relevant. It's playing out in the days we live in. And it's also who we are. The second promise here is that I will make kings come from you. There's a scepter promise to Abraham. We understand that more. Messiah, King of David. You know, one of the reasons why Yeshua, when he began his earthly ministries, declared the reign or the kingdom of heaven is in hand is because the king was back. Whoa. Israel had been dispersed. The king of David had been taken from the throne in Jerusalem. But when he was born and began his earthly ministry, the king was back. What is a king? Kingdom, it's a place where the king rules. And he was saying, the king is back. But it's not of this world, he told Pilate. Or my servants would fight for me. But he is a king, and it's an everlasting kingdom. And we are citizens of it if we are seeds of Abraham. So we have two things here that we're, we're going to trace. All we're doing right now is continuing to lay this foundation as we looked at last week of this birthright and scepter and how they get split up and how they go through the entire narrative of the scripture. So we looked at that last week. And then in lesson three, uh, we also want to just go back and bounce off two verses for this week. So let's turn to Genesis chapter 48. And again, I'm not going to redo the lesson. This is a key lesson last week in Lesson 3, where we looked at um, Jacob blessing the two sons of Joseph. And um, I'll bring out a few things about this, but let's look at these two verses here. In Genesis chapter 48, verses 15 and 16, it says, And he, that is Jacob, or in this context, he begins to be called Israel up there in uh, verse 10. So he is Israel here. And Israel blessed Joseph and said, The Elohim, which is Hebrew for God, the Elohim before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the Elohim who has fed me all my life to this day, the messenger who has redeemed me from all evil, bless the youths. Joseph had brought his two sons to him to be blessed because Jacob or Israel was about to die. And he said, And let my name be called upon them and the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, and let them increase to a multitude in the midst of the earth. Say, midst of the earth. And then verses 19 and 20, it says, But his father refused. When, when Joseph said, You've got your hands all wrong. This is the firstborn. 
he hit the top sign, the covenant sign, put on their head. It says, but his father refused and said, I know, my son, I know. But he also, meaning Manasseh, the, J, Joseph's natural firstborn, becomes a people, and he is also great. Say a people. Manasseh is a great people in the earth, and there's many I have listened to who identify him in different places. We may look at that, we may not. It's not the most important. And yet, his younger brother is greater than he, and his seed is to become the completeness of the nations. Say nations. So we have Manasseh, who is going to become a great nation or a great people, but we have Ephraim, who's going to become great nations, plural. His seed is going to be the fruitful vine of, of Jacob. And look over to chapter 49. Again, we've gone over these. Verse 22, 49-22, when Jacob was now prophesying to the 12 sons and speaking to Joseph, he said, Joseph is an offshoot of a fruit-bearing tree. Any wild branches in here say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Offshoots today. An offshoot. What's an offshoot? One who was separated from his brethren. Hello. One who's been separated. Am I Israel? I don't know. I've been separated. I've been sown in the nations. I think my identity is with Egyptian, Babylonian-based systems because I was born here like Joseph's offspring. But all of a sudden, I look into the face of Israel, and he looks at me, he makes the sign of the covenant, he puts his hand on me, and he says, you're going to be called by my name. And the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is going to be your God. And those little Egyptian boys who are us in the spiritual prophetic type look up at Israel and say, what? I'm not Babylonian church, Cersei. You know what that is? It's a fish in the house, right? You know what that represents? Anybody read the story of Jonah? Where did Jonah live? Northern Israel. Ephraim and Penasseh. Northern Israel. He was called to go where? Nineveh. Nineveh. All right. What was Nineveh? It was a pagan city, right? Those outside the covenant, right? Do you know who Nineveh worshipped? They worshipped Ishtar. Well, Known by many names. Well, Queen of Heaven, Ishtar. Uh, well, Easter. But Ishtar had a sign. A cuneiform sign in Samaria. Do you know what that sign was? A fish in a house. Do you know what Babylon has called us? Ichthus, little fishes in their house. Do you know what God's raising up right now? Prophets out of the northern kingdom to go and to declare to them, you need to repent and turn back to God because the wrath of God is coming. And if you're in the city, wrath is going to come to you. You know what Jeremiah prophesied? I'm going to send fishers and they're going to fish. Do you know where they're going to fish? And the people outside of the covenant who don't know who they are. Yeshua said, I'm going to make you what? What did he say, fishers of men? Because he was talking to a bunch of fishermen, maybe. But maybe there was a deeper prophetic meaning. I'm going to cause you to go into the house of Ishtar or Circe or the queen of heaven, the consort of Nimrod. Come on. And I'm going to cause you to go in there and to, to preach to them who they are and to fish them out. I'm excited. I may be the only one in the room, but I know I'm not as he smiles. I'm just excited. Joseph is an offshoot of a fruit-bearing tree, an offshoot of a fruit-bearing tree by a fountain. His branches run over the wall. Say over the wall. He's going to go out and into every kindred, nation, tribe, and tongue. I'm going to show it to you in a minute. And the archers have bitterly grieved him and shot him. And I'm not going to go through the rest of it. But notice at the bottom it says, uh, verse 26b, it says, They are on the head of Joseph and on the crown of him who was separated from his brothers. We have been separated from Israel. And we have thought we were a part of Circe. But God is saying, come out of Circe and become Israel. Because that 
that's who you are. Now I'm going to live dangerously. I want to get to Jeremiah 31 that we sang today. But I'm going to live dangerously, and I want to take you over to Revelation chapter 7. Now we all know chapter 6 of Revelation are the infamous horsemen, the horse and riders are very important there. Because one's a person, and one is an entity that it rhymes with, okay? And we're not going to get into teaching on that today. But I love, right after this um, fifth seal of the martyrs, on the sixth seal, let's back up to Revelation 6, on the sixth seal, verse 12. It says that I looked when he opened the sixth seal and I saw a great earthquake came to be. Say great earthquake. Now when he says earthquake, he doesn't mean one piece of the earth is going to quake. He means an earth. All right. He, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood and the stars of the heaven fell to the earth like a fig tree dropping its unripe figs being shaken by a strong wind. So you got the whole earth shaking. You've got the, the stars falling from the heavens. This generation is going to see this, okay? And then you've got the sun going black. You've got the moon turning red. And all this stuff is going on because of a strong wind. And it says, verse 17, And heaven departed like a scroll being rolled up. And God said, this is the culmination of the ages. This part's over. It's time to change the, the, the set on the stage. And he takes the backdrop and he rolls it up that he spread out in the first place. And every mountain, say every mountain, and every island was moved out of its place. That's how we know it's an earthquake. Not just a little place like Israel just had two earthquakes last week. They were reeling and rocking over in Israel. Some people were saying, oh, it was Jeremiah, Zechariah 14 coming where Yeshua puts his foot on the fall outside of the gate of Jerusalem and there's a split on that fault line because the Messiah, King David, is back to rule in the city. Everybody say Yeshua rules. Yeshua rules. Ooh, verse 15. And the sovereigns of the earth say, hey, we were on his side. We were worshiping Yehovah. You know, well, the time we were up prophesying the will of God. After all, we were politicians. No. It says, and the sovereigns of the earth and the great ones and the rich ones and the commanders and the mighty and every slave and every free one did what? Hit their silk and their dumbs, their deep underground bases that they dug all over the earth. What does that tell us? They're not going to be in there yet until Yeshua violently interrupts what is happening in the earth. I'm telling you, it's going to come sooner than we think, and it's going to catch the world by surprise. That's right. We best be getting our houses in order. That's right. Yes. Come on. Oh. They're going to hide themselves in caves and in rocks of the mountains that they have dug all over this earth right now. And said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us, hide us. Hosea chapter 10, verse 8. From the face, say face. From the face of him sitting on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Can you imagine the glory, the eminence, the power, the esteem, the honor that's going to come not from the bazooka or the atomic bomb that Yeshua has, just his face. Oh. He's going to rip the heavens like a scroll. They're going to roll up in the whole earthquake. Can you imagine the thumper and the subwoofer of the audio of the earth shaking? Woo. Stars falling like figs. His face. Uh oh. The Hebrew Jewish son of David has just come through the clouds. Come on. Yeah. And I want a G7 summit. I want a dumb underground bunker. Ah! <laughs> Angela Merkel, Trump, whoever's there at the time, they take their little hideings in their holes. Because the real king has shown up in his glory. That's it's right. His face. It's just his face. I can show you my face today. <laughs> you know what? But when his face comes through, oh yeah. my, 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 Come on, that's good preaching. Come, Come on. on, say face it. <laughs> Just face it. <laughs> Just face it. <laughs> All he's going to do is face him, man. The face of him. Right now they think he's forgotten. They think he's dead. They think he's not watching. All the molestation of children around the world being offered on sacrificial idols. Idols and the, the SRA people that are ritualistically being offered up to Satan in private dark places. 
And they say he's blind, he's deaf, he doesn't see, he doesn't hear all these martyrs in seal five that are underneath the throne calling out, avenge our blood. You see, it's for our revenge that he comes. That's right. That's Have you right. read about why he comes in vengeance? He has no vengeance of his own. No one has done him harm. Read the prophecies. When he shows up with vengeance, it is vengeance of Zion. Yeah. It is for Zion's sake yeah. that he's yeah. returned. That's right. Oh. Because the great day that Mark was speaking of, the great day of his wrath has come. Who is able to stand when the earth's rocking? You better be on the rock. Mm -hmm. My Elohim is my rock, and I take refuge in him. The shield and the horn of my deliverance, my high tower and my refuge. My Savior, he saves me from violence. I call on Jehovah. So it's what we're going to be doing while our feet are shaking. We're going to be seeing the prophecy of the seed of David yeah. in 2 Samuel 22. Mm -hmm. Get it in your heart. Oh. Chapter 7, verse 1. I want to get to Jeremiah. <laughs> and after this, I saw four messengers, okay? And they got all this stuff going on. I'm going to skip down. They're going to they're gonna purify the earth for the millennial messianic age. And run all the demons out of it. Yeah. And then verse 4. And I heard the number of those who were sealed. 144,000 sealed out of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Now, before you read this, I want to ask you a question. Are you this? Or are you this? That's a tov. It means the sign of the cross or the covenant in Paleo Hebrew. Are you in Jehovah's house? His holy nation, Israel, his set apart people? Or are you in Ishtar's house? Because if you read chapter 7 with the mentality that I was born in, you had the tribes of Israel over here, and then you had the church over here. But if the church or the Circe or Ishtar, as God's people, not saying she doesn't exist, but if that is not our identity, when we read chapter 7, you have the 12 tribes of Israel, but then you also have something very interesting happens that we can connect to if we don't jump over here to this side and say, oh, you got the 12 tribes, and then you got the church. Well, if the church isn't there, one nation, as Peter said, one holy people, one peculiar royal priesthood, then where are we? Let's look at it, verse 5. And of the tribe of Judah, 12,000, Reuben, 12,000, Gad, 12,000, Asher, 12,000, Naphtali, 12,000, Manasseh, second son of Joseph, 12,000, Simeon, 12,000, Levi, 7,000, Yissachar, 12,000, Zebulun, 12,000, Joseph, 12,000, Benjamin, 12,000. So there's 12 by 12 here. 144,000 were sealed in that place in that time. Who is missing of the tribes in this list? <coughs> Two conspicuous names are missing. Anybody say Dan? Dan. Anybody say Dan in that list? No? How about Ephraim? Anybody say, see Ephraim in that list? Interesting. Now we could talk about Dan. We could go back to Genesis 49 and talk about the prophecy that Jacob prophesies over him. How he's going to become a serpent that's going to strike the heel of the horse that causes the rider to fall off and he becomes the adder of the serpent in the earth. When you parallel that with the prophecy of the serpent's offspring in Isaiah, very well could be the anti-Messiah. But that's not what we're talking about today. But he is obviously not listed. But then you have another one who is interesting, based on what we learned last week as we went to Genesis 48, where Israel blesses Ephraim and Manasseh. Ephraim is the firstborn. 
In Scripture and in prophecy, Manasseh is the second born, but Manasseh is mentioned here, but Ephraim's missing. But we know from last week that Ephraim becomes what? A multitude of every kindred, tribe, and tongue. So if Ishtar's house is really not Yah's house, and Ephraim is mysteriously missing from this list, what is Holy Spirit communicating through John? Let's look and see. Verse 9. After this, after I looked at Judah, Reuben, Gad, Asher, Naphtali, Manasseh, Stephen, Levi, Isaacar, Zebulun, Joseph, Benjamin. After this, I looked and I saw a great multitude. I saw a great crowd. Verse 9. Ephraim becomes a what? A great multitude prophesied by Israel. Surely God's not this great. Surely our God is not this awesome that he can call the end from the beginning. After this, I look and I saw a great crowd which no one was able to count out of all nations. What? Out of all what? Out of all what tribes? Out of all what people? Oh my goodness, could this be speaking of the fulfillment of Jehovah's word with the dying half-blind Israel resurrected himself on his deathbed? Not literally, but God himself strengthened, laid his hands, the sign of the top on the two half-blooded sons of Joseph that were in Egypt, i.e. spiritual Babylon, and said, you were mine, my name is on you, and you're going to become a great multitude of nations and overflowing vine over the wall? Could this be the fulfillment of it in our near future and a part of which we are a part of? I don't know if God's that great. You think he can really write it? He can really tell us that? Hmm. Let's see if there are any more hints for those who have Hebrew eyes to see. All nations and tribes and peoples and tongues standing before the throne and before the Passover lamb dressed in white robes and palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice saying, Deliverance! Do you know the cry of deliverance has gone forth from Isaiah 11 in the earth to deliver the captives who have been born in Babylon's house to come out? Yes. And do you know what we're going to cry on that day? Deliverance belongs to our Elohim who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the messengers or the angels stood around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped Elohim saying, Amen. The blessing and the esteem and the wisdom and the thanksgiving and the respect and the power and the might to our Elohim before and forever and ever he decreed it. In Genesis 17, he worked it out through the generations and the fulfillment of it is standing here before him. Verse 13, and one of the elders who responded say to me, Who are these dressed in white? Everybody say who. Who. And where do they come from? Everybody say where. Where. Did you hear in Genesis chapter 47 when uh, Jacob, Israel, was crossing his hands to lay them before he did? He looked at Yosef and he said, Who are these you were bringing? And Joseph said, These are my sons who were born from me in. Egypt. This is who and where they are. Can you see it? I can't make you see it, but if the Holy Spirit helps you, you can see it. Verse 14, and I said to him, Master, here's John, this Hebrew Israelite, representing Israel in this place, saying to the Master, do you know? And he said to me, in other words, Israel saying, I don't know who these are. I know who Judah, Reuben, Gad, Asher, Natili, Manasseh, Shimeon, Levi, Issachar, Zebulun, Joseph, Benjamin. But who is this great multitude? It's a prophecy within a prophecy. Wow. And I said to him, Master, you know, and he said to me, these are those coming out of great distress. What's the great distress, ladies and gentlemen of the congregation? It is called in the Tanakh or the Old Testament, Jacob's trouble. Who is of the line of Jacob? Yisrael. Who is the firstborn 
of Israel. He declares it. First Chronicles chapter 5, 1 declares it. Verse 2, actually. Ephraim is the firstborn. We're going to look at it in Jeremiah again today. We are Jacob, and we are going to go through Jacob's great distress, but we are going to come out if we endure with white robes and palm branches. Look at your neighbor and say, get your palm ready. <laughs> Those are coming out of the great distress, having washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Passover lamb. They came out of Jacob's trouble. Because of this, because of this, they are before the throne of Elohim. Not everybody gets this privilege, you guys. They are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. Hallelujah. In his holy yeah. place. And then look at this prophetic prophecy in a prophecy of the kinsman redeemer taking his end of his robe and spreading it over Ruth, the Moabitess who was born outside the covenant, who comes to the kinsman redeemer and he takes his covering and he puts it over her while the one who was natural born, Naomi, sends her. And he who sits on the throne, our Yeshua kinsman redeemer, shall spread his tent over them. Hallelujah. You're mine. Come on. I'll tell you who you are. You're mine. Come on. Psalms chapter 2. And Yeshua looks to the Father and says, Give me my inheritance. It's yeah. in every nation. Ephesians chapter 2. I pray that the eyes of your heart would be enlightened in order that you may perceive the hope to which you have been called and the inheritance of Yeshua that is in the saints. Oh. In every nation, tribe, kindred, and tongue. He's more marvelous than we know. Hallelujah. And they shall hunger no more. And they shall thirst no more. Neither shall the sun strike them nor any heat. Because the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne shall shepherd them. And lead them to fountains of waters of life. And Elohim shall wipe away every tear from their eyes. Yeah. Amen. Wow. Preach a little. Come on. Ooh. We looked at this last week. We went verse by verse through this chapter in Genesis that decodes what is happening here, chapter 7 of Revelation. Jumping back again, we see the two prophetic types mentioned in Genesis 48. I keep bumping back. I think it's 48. It's 47, 48. But the two prophecy types when Israel or Jacob blesses the two sons of Joseph. Number one, you have a father blessing his beloved son. Joseph was the beloved son and his heirs. We talked about how that is relevant today with us. All right? The father and the adoption of the beloved sons or heirs. And I want to say this again because this is a foundation that we're going to build on as we continue to look at these scriptures as we go. So when... When Jacob, as the father of Joseph, the son, lays his hands on his heirs, Ephraim and Manasseh, it is a prophetic type in the Old Testament of us today, who Yeshua, the beloved son, brings us into the presence of our father. And the father says, who are these? And he says, these are the ones born to me out of the nations. Mm. And he says, bring them to me, and I will put my name yeah. upon them, my identity upon them. Can you get that? All right, I want to go over that again because it's imperative. But there is a second prophetic type. There's probably 20. But there's a second prophetic type here also going on when Israel blesses Ephraim and Manasseh and that is um, as we said last week, Jacob's name is changed in the text and no longer called Jacob and he is called Israel or, or um, Israel and that is significant because his eyes were blinded in the text. And we correlated that with Romans 11, which we will not do today. But all of Israel is being delivered or completed of the nations or saved. And that is another 
prophetic type that we see, let me just read it to you, it might come out clearer. The complete, the second prophetic type is the completeness of Israel coming in the final harvest before the return of the Messiah King in the Messianic age. Israel, what we would consider Geo-Israel or maybe the Jews, finally recognize those who have been considered strangers and outsiders to the covenant in Israel. If you go to Israel today, geopolitical state land mass over there, and you say, I'm Messianic, I believe in your king, Yeshua ben David, the Messiah, I would like to be a part of Israel. You know what they'll say to you? No. We have friends that tried to get citizenship. He was, geo his genealogy was Jewish, but they would not give them citizenship. We are denied to be a part by our older brother right now. Mm -mm, I'm not recognizing you. But before this whole shoot match is over, the favor and the glory of the Father is going to come on Ephraim. And when it does, the jealousy of our big brother is going to burn. And that's why we talked about the prodigal son last week and how it fulfills that. Because we've been sleeping with the pigs. <laughs> Cersei. But oh, we're coming to our senses. And we're coming home. Hallelujah. We're coming home. Yeah. Not only is Israel going to recognize, or you could say Judah, is going to recognize who the rest of Israel is, but those in Messiah, born in the Babylonian Cersei system, are going to realize who we are. Oh, come on. And that's the type that you see here with Israel and the two sons of Joseph. Israel goes, oh, these mixed blooded people are mine. And these two Babylonian, Egyptian born boys look up at this Hebraic man and go, Granddaddy? Now, does this necessitate that you have to be a descendant of Ephraim? No. The Holy Spirit said from the beginning, when we started leading me in this, this is not about going to genealogy.com and seeing if you've got a Jew in your family tree. It's not about that. And I encourage you, Don has very sweetly put up a new playlist for us on our YouTube channel called Shorties. Because all of you who know me know I can't preach very short. But people have short attention spans a lot because of the media society has trained us that way. And so the Holy Spirit's put it on my heart, as there is grace, and we may try to get Mark to do some too, to put up some short little clips where you can get a, a point and back out, okay? And the last one I did was on the Shema here, which is what here in Hebrew is. It's Shema. I say Shema. Shema. Okay? Here. You learn in Hebrew. Shema. Here. Oh, Yisrael. Yehovah is one. And you shall love Yehovah, your Elohim, you by your heart, your soul, your strength, your might. It's the greatest commandment scripture and if you can hear this word and you can repent and you can come out of this Babylonian Ishtar sun worship uh, Christmas day December 25th um, winter solstice traditional lie and you can hear that and you, you know you at first time I heard it I was like I don't know and I started researching I started praying I started asking I started getting in my scripture and if you knock and you seek and you find, God will show you. And if you can hear it, you are Israel. If you can't hear it, there's not very good chance that you are. And there's only two seats in the earth, the ones the evil one has sown and the ones that came through the promised line. It's open to anyone, but as Mark just read, we were picked before the creation of the world. Mm. I did not choose you, but you have chosen me. That's right. Me That's right. That's God. right. So do we have to be Ephraim to be a part of this? No, Ephraim represents all of the tribes of the northern kingdom. In scripture, like we're going to read today, when you see Ephraim in the prophets, it's not just talking about Ephraim. Ephraim I'm going to get ahead of myself. 
stuff, but it's the ten tribes. It's the bigger part, and we'll show you that. So when you read that, it's the northern tribes that were taken by the Assyrians, who was assured, who was the Antichrist system, goes to the Caucasus Mountains and spread out to every nation in the world. They're black. They're yellow. They're red. There's people on YouTube right now who are black Africans, and they go and they find their village, and they've got the Torah, and they're doing the feast, and they're reading. There's Native Americans right now waking up. Chief, I can't remember his name, Thunderstorm or something. It's a really cool guy, but he's waking up, and he's witnessing uh, to these uh, Native American tribes, and they're realizing, well, we call God this name, Yahuwah. And we, the Cherokee took an Ark of the Covenant into battle. And they're realizing, you know, maybe we are one blood, one family, but it's different nation, tribe, kindred, and tongue, because it's a commonwealth of nations that make up. It's a kingdom of Israel, because the king is king of it. Amen? Amen. So, I'm going to get to Jeremiah. But I want to ask you one more question. Turn to Jeremiah, and then we'll, we'll do that. There's so much. It's so good. When you talk about the scripture, you can say it's all good. Hallelujah. Skipping, skipping, skipping. Jeremiah 31. While you're turning there, let me ask you this question. How many of you have heard of the Harbinger? Yes? Mm -hmm. Jonathan Kahn's big book, right? Twin Towers. Do you know that America fit the prophetic plan of that thing to the T according to Scripture? I mean, he said, your towers are going to be cut down. i got to go there. Jeremiah, you're awesome. We're going to go visit Isaiah just for a second. We'll be back. Turn to Isaiah 9. I just want to, I want to perk you to see how relative this is for what we're saying. This is the Harbinger Scripture. Jonathan Kahn preached all over America. Verse 9, and it says, And the people shall know all of them Ephraim. Uh-oh, Ephraim is in this. Hmm. Let's see, everything that happened here happened to America. Hmm. Multitude of nations. Hmm. And the people shall know all of them, Ephraim, and the inhabitants of Samaria or Shomron. What's Samaria? Samaria was the northern capital after the division of the kingdoms. So when you see Ephraim, you're talking about the northern ten tribes. When you see Samaria, you're talking about the capital of the northern ten tribes. What did they do? They were calf worshippers. And what did they do? Because of their idolatry, they were taken and spread out to the nations of the world. They were disciplined as, as what does he call them? Rebellious or whoring heifers, I believe, is what one of the prophets. They get really pictorially graphic. And they went out everywhere and God disciplined them until his heart, it says in Hosea, could not let go of my beloved son Ephraim. My heart yearns for you. And I call for you to come back. And the people shall know all of the Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria who say in pride, let's make ourselves great again. Oh, I didn't say that. I'm sorry. <laughs> or they say in pride, let's humble ourselves. Man, we need God in this nation. Let's not look for a politician or a man to be our savior. Israel wasn't supposed to have a king over it anyway. Let's, let's look to God. Let's, let's tear down the, the Masonic pillar that's in Washington, D.C. called Washington's Monument. It's the cutoff male physical reproductive organ of Osiris, i.e. Nimrod, standing proudly in the nation. Let's, let's, just, let's just go cut it down. Let's take... Columbia off of our Capitol building where the apotheosis or the God setting of, of George Washington is there with all of the false gods around them. Let's go around our nation's capital and cut down all the false gods off the Supreme Court and off the, let's have a real revival like King Josiah where they said, you know, let's tear down the high places. Let's divorce Baal. Let's stop worshiping on our pagan equinoxes of Ishtar and the Queen of Heaven on December. Let's have a no, 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 no. Mm -mm. Let's make ourselves great again. But because it's the hail, the halia, what is it? There's a fancy word. It's the false proving that they prove on us all the time. The knowledge of good and evil. There's the good and there's the bad. Oh, we don't want this bad side. You know, she's she would be a bad person.
present. She's evil. We don't want that one. This one's good. We'll take the good one. But the good and the evil are a part of the same tree. It's not God. That's why they have an inauguration, which means the auger. When you put a president in office in the United States of America, an auguration means the gods give their approval. Oh no. We can't see this. God, wake up, Ephraim, the horn, calf, that we can repent and tear down our idols instead of making ourselves great again. It's not the time to make ourselves great. It's the time to become humble. It's the time to humiliate ourselves before God. And become obedient to his commands. Yeah, they may do good works, but they're not God's works. Can you see this? See you in the morning. The bricks have fallen down, but we rebuild with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down and we replace them with cedars. Can you see this? In 2001, Senator Tom Daschle entered it into the congressional record of the United States of America. This very scripture. Can we see this? An ex-president, George W. Bush, said this very scripture. Can we see this? Obama wrote it on the bottom of the Freedom Tower that they erected in New York City. But can we see this? America fits this to a T. It's been entered into our congressional record. The cedar tree in New York City that died has been replaced. But can we see this? At the bottom of the Freedom Tower is the huge stones that it was built upon. But can we see this? Because what we don't understand is this is a harbinger to Ephraim. And it's not just these two verses that it stops with. It continues through the rest of the chapter of the judgment that comes on the nation that does this. Ladies and gentlemen of the congregation, if America fits to the T, the statement of pride, the cedar and the other tree that replaced it in the huge stone, why do we think the rest of this chapter will not fit? As our government, ah, I just won't even go there. Most people can't hear this. We are so Masonic in our bloodlines that we can't hear the truth. Get the Masonic bloodline out of you. To renounce the Masonic bloodlines in this nation, or you will not be able to see the truth. It goes on, chapter 10 talks about the Antichrist. It talks about our future and what's coming. Chapter 10, verse 20, it talks about the remnant and what God's going to do with these days. It's all here in our scriptures. But I've got myself in enough trouble. Let's go back to safe water. Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah 31. Verse 1. Actually, let's go to chapter 30 and look at verse 22. There is no chapter in the original writing, and you've got to keep going. Jeremiah 22, chapter 30, verse 22. And you shall be my people, and I shall be your Elohim. See, the storm of Jehovah shall go forth in a rage, in a whirling storm. Ladies and gentlemen, this storm is about to hit this planet. It burst upon the head of the wrong. Say the wrong. The wrong. Say the wrong. the wrong. The burning displeasure of Jehovah shall not turn back until he has done and established the purpose of his heart in the latter days. What is he talking about? The days that you and I are living in. In the latter days, you shall what? Not have a clue at what your God is doing in the earth. No. In the latter days, you shall consider it. My translation says understand it. We are to understand this. What are we to understand? Keep reading. Chapter 30, 
to go back to Mount Zion. That's the cry that's being heard in the earth today for him who has an ear to hear. Verse 7. For thus said Jehovah, sing with gladness for who? Jacob. Why? Because his scattered soul sing is being drawn back. Hallelujah. For thus said Jehovah, sing with gladness for Jacob and shout among the what? Chief of nations. Why? Because Ephraim is the firstborn. He carries that firstborn blessing. What is the most blessed nation in the earth today? Is it because we're really that smart? Cry out. Cry out. Give praise. Get up in your pulpits and say, let me tell you the greatest miracle of our time. Let me tell you what God is doing in our generation. Don't hide it. Publish it. Cry out. Give praise and say, Oh, Yahweh, save your people, the remnant of Israel. Will you say that with me? Say, Oh, Yahweh. Oh, Yahweh. Save your people. Save your people. The remnant of Israel. The remnant of Israel. See, I am bringing them from the land of the north and shall gather them from the ends of the earth. Among them, the blind and the lame, those that think they can see but they can't, those that think they're walking in the right ways, but they're not. And their legs and their feet are going to be healed, but they can walk in the ways of Yahweh. And those with child, and those that labor together, a great assembly, not a church, but an assembly returning here. Verse 9, this is the way we're going to return when we realize, oh, God wasn't in Ishtar. Oh, God wasn't in December 25th. Oh, God wasn't in sun worship. Oh, with weeping they shall come. I've had days of weeping in my house when I realize the lives I've inherited. With weeping they shall come, and with their prayers I bring them. What should be going on in the nation right now? Weeping and returning back. Yeah, yeah. With weeping they shall come, and with their prayers I bring them. I shall make them walk by rivers of water, abundance, in the straightway, in the Torah, in which they do not stumble. For I, notice who's doing this, I bring them, I make them, and I am a father to them. As Mark said today, God is doing this. This is not our own effort. For I shall be a father to Israel. And notice Ephraim, he is my firstborn. Hear the word of Jehovah, O nations, and declare it in the isles, Great Britain, Wales, Scotland, those that have the sign of the Tav on their flags because they know who they were. Good. He who scattered Israel gathers and shall guard him as a shepherd his flock. This is why we can look at a shore or the antichrist system that is coming on this planet through artificial intelligence and an enslavement in a 5G AI embedded system that has the ability to quantum calculate every move, purchase, and hair on your head, who was wanting to be like God, omnipresent, watching our every move, recording our every word. But I have news for them. It shall be short lasted because there's going to be one who's going to roll back the heavens and his face, his face is going to come through and they're going to run for the hole. Verse 11, for Jehovah shall ransom. What does that mean, redeemed? If you're redeemed in this room today, would you say hallelujah? Hallelujah. For Jehovah shall redeem Jacob and redeem him or deliver him from the hand of the one stronger, the Antichrist, is sure than he. And they shall come in and they shall see on the height of Zion and stream to the goodness of Jehovah for grain and for new wine and for oil and for the young of the flock and the herd and their beings shall be well watered garden. Notice it's their being, not just a natural land that is a forerunner of first type in geopolitical Israel. 
world right now where desert is turned into a garden, but our being is going to be a well-watered garden and never languish again. Then shall a maiden rejoice in a dance and a young man and old together, and I shall turn their mourning. With Leanne, when you hear this, this is your mourning that you've been talking to me about. Be turned to joy and shall comfort them and shall make them rejoice from their sorrow and shall fill the being of the priest with fatness. And my people shall be satisfied with the goodness, with my goodness, declares Jehovah. Thus said Jehovah, a voice was heard in Ramah, or in Ramah, wailing and weeping. Who was that voice? Rachel. Who was Rachel? The mother of Joseph. Who was Rachel? The grandmother of Ephraim and Manasseh. And what was Rachel doing? She was weeping for her children. Why? Because her children had gone into slavery. They'd gone into captivity. They'd been sown into every nation of the world. They had lost God's ways. They had lost his name. They had lost his identity. And Rachel is weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted for her children were no more. Verse 16, thus said Jehovah, hold back your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for there is a reward for your work. Ladies and gentlemen of the congregation of Israel, we are the reward of that work. Mm. Amen. Declare Jehovah, and they shall return from the land of the enemy. I'm thankful for the United States of America, but this is not my home, my country, or my land. I am a seed of Abraham looking for a city whose builder and maker is Jehovah. I yeah. am a citizen of Mount Zion, the firstborn of Israel. Yeah. And I am returning from a Babylonian land of my enemy where I was born. And there is an expectancy for your latter end. That's us. Declare Jehovah and your children. They shall return to their own country. And I have clearly heard Ephraim lamenting. You have chastised me, and I was chastised like an untrained calf. Turn me back. Grant me repentance. And I shall turn back, for you are my Elohim. Verse 19, for after my turning back, after my repentance, I repented. And after that, I was instructed. You begin to open up the scriptures to me. And I begin to see your ways were not my ways, and my ways were not your ways, but I repented and gave up my ways. It's okay. I'll humble myself and do it your way. For after my turning back, I repented, and after I was instructed, I struck myself on the thigh, and I was ashamed, even humiliated, for I bore the reproach of my youth. Is Ephraim a precious 
you post a landmark, set your heart toward the highway. Isaiah 35, we preached it, the way in which you went. Turn back, O oh maiden in Israel, turn back to these cities of yours. Till when you would turn here and there, O oh backsliding daughter, for Jehovah has created what is new on earth, a woman encompassing a man. What in the world does that mean? A woman here. When you look it up in the Hebrew, it means a bride or it means Zion. And a man is the word geber. In the Hebrew, it means a mighty warrior. For a, a bride is encompassed. Don't be afraid, little, little flock. Don't be afraid. It's not the storm of the shore that we should fear. It is the storm of Yahweh that is about to break on the head of the wrong. But if you will cling to the everlasting covenant with the everlasting promises as an everlasting people with an everlasting sure word of prophecy, you will be surrounded by a mighty Mm -hmm. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word today. Yes. Give us ears to hear and eyes to see who we are, whose we are. Separate us from the vile and let us have the discernment to separate the precious from the vile, the pure from the impure. And let us call no man king. But let us say, you alone are our king, our deliverer, our savior. We do not worship man. We do not worship man-made systems. But we worship you because you are our deliverer. Mm. Let the seed of Abraham who's been sown in the nation and because of his great compassion being called back in this day, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then may Jehovah make his face shine upon you. May he give you shalom as you go through your week. Hallelujah.